How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary and today we're going to review the Curse of Osiris campaign that just came out for us in Destiny 2. Is it worth your 20 or 17.50 if you got the season pass uh, amount? Well in this, uh, this video we're going to talk about just the campaign, the warning there are going to be spoilers. Uh, if you haven't played through it, just go ahead and play through it. It's gonna, it took me like three hours and I was taking my sweet time going through it. You could probably do it within, I've heard an hour, two hours, something like that. Anyways guys, so what I'm going to talk about is the story. I'm going to talk about the gameplay, the graphics, the music, and just kind of the overall experience of what this uh, campaign had to offer. So, obviously it's called Curse of Osiris. So, who are we following and who are we talking about in this campaign? Obviously, Osiris. He is, you know, the, the, the Zavala before Zavala, as they refer to it in the game itself. Which is like, wow, we got to maybe dive into a little bit of history of the Guardians, the Vanguards, and all that great stuff, because Osiris has a great backstory. If you guys don't know who Osiris really is, I made a video about that. Go check it out. It'll be linked at the end of this video and in the description as well. Please go check it out. I did my research on it. And Os Osiris has a phenomenal story. He has such a great backstory of why he's in the situation he's in, but then... Uh, so you expect that you would go into talking a little bit about the backstory, why Osiris is doing the things that he is doing. Why is Osiris so obsessed with the Vex? Why is he just doing anything? And in typical, typical Bungie Destiny storytelling fashion, they describe nothing. <laughs> this guy was a vanguard. He was, like I said, the Zavala before Zavala. He was one of the main uh, guardians out there, and he was exiled from the tower. They kicked him out. Why is that? They don't talk about it. If they do, it's in passing while you're shooting so that you don't pay attention to it. And so, uh, Osiris, very interesting guy. You find out nothing about him. Absolutely nothing. It's a complete shame. Uh, the storytelling just falls so flat in this campaign. It's it's just such a disappointment. But what should I expect now out of uh, a Destiny game now? It's all action. That's all it is. And at, for that point, it's actually like not too bad. But the sticking on the story here, like... So, you, the, the DLC is called Curse of Osiris. So, you would think Osiris would be one of the main characters in the story. That is false. The main character of this campaign is probably Sagira, you, and um, a little bit of um, Ikora. And that's about it. You see Zavala in the very beginning. And that's why you see, you see Osiris in the very beginning and at the very end. He helps you in the last mission. Which is, I have my own opinions about that one as well. And um, it's so disappointing. Like, I thought you'd be fighting side by side by him. I thought you'd be finding out some truth to uh, what Osiris was doing. Because he was exiled because people thought he was freaking crazy. And so incredibly obsessed with the Vex and their technology and their ability to time travel. That they thought that he was probably like crazy. They thought he was absolutely nuts. And that's why they kicked him out. And that does that's not described at all. You know, there's nothing to describe what he's actually doing in there. Obviously, if you know anything about the backstory, he's probably just trying to find out more about the Vex and how their time travel thing and all that great stuff works, which he actually does figure out, which you don't like experience much time travel kind of gameplay at all. That's not inter integrated, which is very sad. Uh, I mean, uh, if you do count uh, the multiple uh, simulations of Osiris as him, then he's kind of trickled in throughout the story but not so much to the point where i feel like he's an integral character you see in the very beginning and very end and at the end of it he's just like hey thanks for your help you stopped uh, the vex from destroying the world and uh i'm gonna go back and keep doing my thing you do you and uh thanks that's pretty much how it went down such a bummer man it I thought you'd have like some maybe almost like detective-like work, like you'd be figuring out the truth, uh, you know, validates uh, Osiris, have him be bring him back to the tower, and he'd be one of the main characters, maybe in a vendor, you know, maybe he takes over Brother Vance, maybe. I was kind of hoping for Brother Vance to meet Osiris because he Vance is such an incredible fanboy of Osiris that like I'd be like, hey, awesome. <laughs> You know, you guys get the meat. How great is that? It'd be, plus, it'd be great, just like a really funny, joyful moment. Because Vance is, Brother Vance is like the biggest fanboy of Osiris. Like, he stands all day, spends all day just reading text, following about him. And he even tells you in the story, he's like, 
you you met him and you didn't bother him to, to say anything to me you know, me having met him I've been spending my entire life studying this guy and we're like yeah tough for you you should get uh you should remove your band so you can actually see things and then yeah uh, you can actually help us out like tough titties that's basically what our like, response to that which is such a shame man such a bummer <laughs> but yeah um what else and then so like the main villain obviously there's no vex that have like an actual character to them the vex are just kind of like an entity as one and they have bad guys so you've uh, and so you put for top or something like that i can't remember his exact name it begins with a p um he's like the main villain that you fight and um you know he kind of pops in does some space magic space magic stuff and you're like oh crap we gotta fix this out and so, uh, he, you know, uh, it's just, like, you can't really attach to him, but of course you can't really attach to any of the Vex because they're not really like a person or have a personality. They're just robots that have one thing in mind of taking over the galaxy. And it's just, uh, like the main, and, but the, so like the main boss fight against this guy is you don't actually fight him, which is weird. You fight a bunch of all your typical low tier mo trash mob guys that you normally kill with a few, you know, high tier like elite characters. So that makes it. It's really fun. And don't get me wrong, it's really great, really fun uh, action. Just they just throw so many guys at you for the final boss fight, and it's just like you know, wave after wave, and just so many bad guys, and it's awesome. And uh, Osiris does help you out in that one. But, I mean, like, not like as in like he really helps you, it's more like scripted actions that uh, are planned in the game. And so then the way you do fight the main villain is um, Osiris teleports you to, to the guy, you shoot the big circle in front of you, and then you repeat again, shoot the big circle again, repeat, and then you shoot the big circle, you win the level. Uh, you don't actually fight him. So as a stage, a battle stage, it was really fun. As a boss fight, not so much. I think the best battle actually in this uh, entire uh, DLC was certainly when you're getting on top of one of those uh, the trees or the towers and you, know, you have like this gigantic cyclops thing circling around you and then you have main villains that are spawning up but um, the way the difficulty is scaled is just that it makes the gameplay so easy and uh, as long as you have like a rocket launcher or a sniper rifle or any kind of, or even probably a fusion rifle you can get through that super easily i had my sins of the past rocket launcher and i got through it no problem um it was just a shame man Ugh. storytelling in the gameplay was kind of a letdown to be honest um well actually the gameplay was all right just mainly the story was such a letdown there's so much potential Bungie, why can't you just make a compelling story? You have it in the lore. It's all written. You just have to show it. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. That's just my main complaint about this DLC. So now let's actually go into the gameplay itself. The, st uh, the gameplay is mainly a focus a lot of you going in and out of the infinite forest, which is kind of acts as like this linking point between uh, beginning and end of the mission. Which is alright. Uh, I do really enjoy it. I mean, I played it for like three hours. And I never really felt a sense of repetition so much with the Infinite Forest. And, you know, this isn't procedurally generated, but it's randomized. And, you know, some parts they work. Some parts you can kind of cut through. You know, if you want to rush through them, you can. But I kind of enjoy just running, going through and killing everything. Because the gameplay of Destiny 2 is so great and fun. I just love killing things in this game. Call me crazy. Uh, <laughs> And so, I uh, like that. The Infinite Force is great. Uh, I think they did a great job with uh, making you wanting, making you y actually go on adventures in this, which is fantastic. Before, I actually never bothered with adventures in this game. And I think they actually did, I finally did a good job of actually giving you some incentives by, um, you know, using the Infinite Force. So it kind of creates uh, new experiences every time. You got the, um, and then you have the, uh, heroic versions of the adventures which give you these boxes so you can use for the forging so it gives you incentive to do adventures the adventures are phenomenal in this game adventures and actually also lost sectors as well are just really fun to play around it just trying they bungie needs to get some more incentives so that's definitely a step that, in the right direction for sure um the campaign of the um curse of Osiris, it's fun it's your, you know, they get you get a real nice variety of all the villains. Um, no taken, kind of a bummer. Um, 
no SIVA infused bad guys either. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of its own thing though. But no Taken, which is kind of a bummer. But, um, is that pretty sure? Yeah, yeah, no Taken. Uh, but everything else, you get a nice mixture of all the bad guys because you're playing inside, like, essentially a simulation. So you're jumping into the simulation that the Vex create, and then you try to defeat the Vex within using their own weapon using their uh, simulations against themselves and you know they got some good boss battles which are always fun I always enjoy a good boss battle in these kind of in uh, in destiny 2 um, yeah good variety of weapons and all that kind of stuff um, so yeah just really enjoy yourself the gameplay solid as always I uh, cannot complain there at all lots of fun uh, if you if you just enjoy the solid gameplay of destiny 2 the gameplay is there it's great graphics visuals set pieces. Phenomenal as always. Bungie, that's the one thing def Bungie does a phenomenal job of, is creating an environment that is visually astounding. Like, look, look at this thing on the screen right now. It looks amazing. And you have this visually appealing uh, battle areas you play in. The visuals are fantastic. Uh, I can't praise them enough on that. It's just amazing. The music, obviously, phenomenal. And so they really knock out knock it out of the park with those two and um can't suggest it, can't praise them enough on that uh so overall my experience with this uh, expansion is that it's good um the gameplay is great graphics set pieces the music's all right just the storytelling itself falls so short of what it can be uh, it's just this is a real shame, man. Because this could have been a really good story, and I'm not even dogging on how short the campaign is. As long as you tell a good story within that amount of time, then it's fantastic. And then you know, that's okay, really. Um, I heard that they that Bungie only had like 12 weeks to put this whole thing together. Like shortly after, shortly before, or shortly after uh, release of Destiny 2, they started working on this. So obviously, really crunched for time, super crunched for time. And so I understand why it's not so chock full of uh, content, but I think for the time that they, uh, Bungie had to develop this, they uh, did a pretty damn good job, I'd have to say that. Um, the play space on Mercury is small, yes, but they chop out, base they, you can't use a, um, you can't use a ghost, or not a ghost, but a uh, sparrow in the area. So essentially, it just kind of trims the fat of your normal play space areas. Because let's be real, I'll, like even though you use play spaces that you have, like say, like in the EDZ or in on uh, Nessus or or anywhere else, or big, wide, expansive areas, but a lot of that area is just kind of traveling from A to B locations. They look phenomenal. They really create a sense of environment, but uh, a lot of it's just kind of fluff. And so I think they kind of tried removing that a bit, and they have everything within walking distance, uh, which I think is great. Uh, only one lost sector, one treasure box area. So excuse me. And so I was kind of hoping for a bit more, though it's kind of a letdown there. But um, I think for the play space of Mercury, it's great. The Infinite Forest is a lot of fun. I really enjoy jumping in and playing that. Uh, it's really just a bunch of fun. They have little miniature boss battles inside that as well. Yeah, so it's great. Um, other than that, uh, I'd say, as a whole, is it worth 20 bucks? I certainly got my game time in for, for 20 bucks. Um, is it a phenomenal DLC that you must have? And possibly. I think it does a great job of bringing in Heroic Strikes. Um, I think the addition that they do for the adventures is phenomenal. And so, overall, I say it's pretty good. I don't regret my purchase. I had my fun out of it. And I'll certainly be creating more content for it as well. So, if you guys want to see more stuff like that, please make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see more content like this. Leave a comment down below what you thought of the Curse of Osiris DLC. Uh, have you played it? Have you bought it? Are you on the fence? Let me know. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you're new to the channel, tap the subscribe because we're always uploading awesome Halo 5 and Destiny 2 content on this channel. So, thank you so much for watching, people. I know it's a long video, but hey... Got to get my thoughts out on this. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video.